Welcome sports fans, welcome back to another video. I'm your host, Jomar. I am Rush. And this is This or That Sports TV, the place you come to get the best, most riveting, and interesting sports topics and discussions on the internet. Yes, people. So today we'll be doing our weekly Manning Cup Roundup. We'll be talking about the second round, aka the quarterfinals today. Yeah, and in general, just Manning Cup 2021 so far. Mm -hmm. Let me ask it. So, Rush. The preliminary stages and the quarterfinals are over. And we have four remaining. Mm -hmm. And that is what we're going to discuss today, guys. How it got to this point. Right? So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Yeah, you want to talk about the groups first? Let's go. All right, but wait, up. before we do. Yeah, man. Do you know? People, like the video, share the video, and subscribe right now if you're not. Subscribed. Right, right now. All right, Rush. Vibes. All right, so group one. JSC topped the group with 9 points from 3 games. Stats was in 2nd place, so both teams automatically qualified to the semi-finals with 4 points from 3 games. Mona finished with 4 points, mm -hmm. but they lost out on goal difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, St. Catherine didn't win a game in the 2nd round from the, the 3 games. In Group 2 though, Kingston College topped that group with 9 points from 3 games. Undefeated in the competition so mm -hmm. far, as you predicted. Charlie Smith. With six points from three games. Yeah, and Excelsior finished that group, three points and then KT. No, no points from the three games. Yeah, um, let's speak about the groups. Um, let's start with, with the first group. Yes, yeah, so a group one. Alright, so well we see, we see JC coming out on top. Mm -hmm. Um a very good performance by JC. Oh, in the first game? Um in the in the in overall. overall, yeah. But <clears throat> You want to go ahead and speak about their games? Their oh, in the first game, we were, we were watching that game. It was Jamaica College versus Mona High mm -hmm. School. I mean, the first half, Mona was really, really good. I liked what I saw from Mona, but, you know, they ran out of steam and JC just you know, dominated the yeah, second half um, of the game. Easy, experience easy. and depth um, paid dividends in that game and JC came out on top and ultimately were the better team. Superstar After, performance from the captain. Yeah, Duncan McKenzie had an outstanding performance and he is one of the outstanding players of the Manning Cup season thus far. Mm -hmm. Continue to look out for great things from him. Alright, your second game was Stats versus Jamaica College. Right? That game finished 5-3. A lot of goals in that game. That, game, that game was a cracker rush. Mm -hmm. That game was back and forth, end to end action. No, we but didn't it, Stats was up, right? I yeah, think yeah was, we saw, so we saw, it was just, um, end-to-end -end football very good football by both teams and jc as as they did against wolf as they did against mona they just showed why they are the top yeah, dogs yep. the quality worked out the experience worked out and eventually they overcame stats and they got five goals mm -hmm. but stats scoring three goals in that game showed that stats has some quality and not only that it, it worked out in their favor ultimately when it came down to goal difference mm -hmm. because really and truly yeah. it was going to goal score mm -hmm. Because Mona had a, had a good performance yeah, in the group yeah, yeah. too. They started badly, but they recovered. If Mona had if Mona had managed to score one more goal against Catherine, things yep. would have been different. Yeah. And Mona re against the stats, Mona did play. Mona did play. Outplay stats. Well, we'll soon get to the stats All picture. Right. But the last one, Jamaica mm -hmm. College versus St. Catherine College, comfortably won that game. JC 3-1. Alright, so let's talk about stats games. Yeah, in the second even round. before we talk about stats games, valiant effort to Catherine. A good team, but Let's face it, they were outclassed in this mm -hmm. zone. They were the third best team in the zone. And they were the fourth best fourth team best in the zone. Team. And it just it just was what it was. Mm. So good 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 run to Catherine. Hopefully they can do well in one of the knockout competitions. As it relates to stats, the second place team who advanced from the zones. So we saw where we saw where they faced off against Catherine first. And they started out with a bang. Lynn getting a hat trick in that game and an assist. Stop their authority on Catherine, and I think that was the game that ultimately secured their second, their semi-final berth. Mm -hmm. Even though it was their first game, their performance in that in that game is what led to them ultimately making it out of the, the um the quarterfinal. We're game. talking about stats, right? Mm -hmm. Quick plug, guys. We did a team feature with stats Manning Cup team. Go and check it out. It's very devastating. Yeah, so go check. <laughs> so, so stats in their second game. <laughs> stats, stats in their second game against JC as we just spoke about. 
end-to-end -end action and very good performance by Stats and as I said, their ability to score goals because had this game finished 5-1, they would have been out mm -hmm. so guys, even though you're losing, you're not always out of it continue to press hard, continue score to play goal. well 5-3, just a minus 2 that, Especially in a table situation, score as many goals as you can so that, that ultimately aided them and in the final game against Mona which I have a special affinity for Mona I like some of their players and I like the way how they play football and I had them exiting this zone and, Unfortunate. I, and against stats, they played what we would say the better football. They had more chances. They were um, pressuring stats for the whole game ultimately. Mm -hmm. A late, a late set piece goal by some faulty defending mm -hmm. would have cost Mona two points. And not only did it cost Mona two points, it cost them their spot in the semi final. So I think it was a tough break for Mona. Very tough break for Mona, but in the same breath, well deserved by stats I for agree. managing to score the goals. I agree. Let's talk about group two though. Um, Kingston College and Charlie Smith um, exited that group, but I'll talk about Charlie Smith and then you go on to talk about Kingston College, all right? Charlie Smith first game against Kingston, Kingston College, they lost that game 3 0. No, we saw that game and we were like, all right, Charlie Smith is not making it out of this group. They won't win a game, all right. KT will make it out, or Excelsior will make it out. But Charlie Smith recovered. Very well. They put aside Excelsior High School 2 1 in their second game at Stadium East. And then they went on to beat Kingston Technical, you know, one of the, the surprise packages yeah, in this yeah, year's yeah. competition. 4 1. I think that was a surprise result, bro. Yeah, honestly, KT, you know, I was expecting more from them. Mm -hmm. And maybe the occasion got too big. For maybe it. they ran out of steam. Maybe it's a young team, yeah, you know, they're the coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think ultimately, um, Excelsior put together a good team and so did Charlie Smith and they managed to get the better of KT. KT would have started some of these games well, mm -hmm. but ultimately at the end of the games is where they started to drop off and lose steam and we see where, I guess, that and inexperience would have cost KT. Right. But Kingston College in the second round, my pick to win the Manning Cup guys by the way, and I think they just showed why they are who they are. They just showed why they have the name. Mm -hmm. Easily coasting against Charlie Smith, 3-0. Easily coasting against KT, 3-0. And a comfortable 2-0 victory against El right. It's very important that they're undefeated now, bro. Because that says a lot. It's hard to go through an entire season and not lose a game. Not only not lose, so but that, win all the games. Win, uh, win all the games. That is, have, it's very have, special. They have points to this point. Kingston College. Uh, guys, plug again. Go and check out our Manning Cup team feature with Kingston College. We yeah. interviewed the coach, Lord LeBernard. And we interviewed one of, their, one of their young standout players. The captain. And, and so. he, he said, you know, we're winning everything. And mm -hmm. so far, they've showed that they do have the ability. And as I said, my pick to win. So that, guys, is how this, the quarterfinals ended. Right. All right, guys. So before we move on to some of the other things that we want to talk about, let's touch on, you know, the, the, the competition change for the Walker Cup. So the rule change for the Walker Cup. Right, so normally all the teams that progress to the second round will compete in the Walker Cup. Yeah, so the Walker Cup would be an 18 knockout competition. Right, but now the Walker Cup, what is happening now is that the teams that are not making it to the semi final mm -hmm. will be competing in the Walker Cup. So essentially, for all of my European football lovers, mm. the Walker Cup is um, comparable to the Europa League, yep. and the Champions Cup is comparable to the Champions League. Yep. So the teams that did not progress to the semi-final of the of the Manning Cup. So the Monas, the Excelsiors, the um, Kingston Technicals mm -hmm. and St. Catherine High School, yep. those teams would advance to a Walker Cup um, fixture where it would just be a semi-final yeah, final. So, yeah, it, it's weird, I don't know if you like the change. I think it's alright, it, it, it continues the season for the teams that you know, ended it prematurely and, and wanted to play some more football. But Kingston College, Jamaica College, it's historically... Yeah, you know, because those those teams, uh, I think this cost Kingston, Kingston College a chance at winning the Walker Cup and adding more Walker Cups mm -hmm. to the amount of because, Walker Cups. Because, like as I was saying, these two schools are, you know, dominant figures in the Walker Cup competition. Yeah. So them not getting a chance to compete in the Walker Cup, all right, it's a change. But it gives a chance for, you know, and I KT think, and I think to it's for the sake of, of continuity and wrapping this competition up so it doesn't interlap with, with yeah, champs yeah, yeah, yeah. and other yeah. school schoolboy and girl competitions. However, I think going forward, um, what they can do, instead of having the Champions Cup being a, a competition with 16 teams, mm -hmm. they could have the Champions Cup be a competition with 8 teams. And the four teams that progress to the semi-final play in the Champion Cup from the Dorcaster Cup mm -hmm. and the Manning Cup yeah. and then they have a Champions Cup league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the Walker Cup should still be eight 
the Ben Francis Cup should still be eight, and the Champions Cup should be eight as well. But I, and also too, you have to remember that there's there are only twenty two teams in Manning Cup this year. Yeah. Right? Significantly less than what would have been in Manning Cup last year. So what, what we would have seen is that almost half the teams are. I would be playing in the World Cup. I, I, so I understand the rule change. I understand why they did it. Um, it, it's something interesting to look out for. Who was your pick for the World Cup? Um, well, my, Mona High School. Mona High. I rock it. I rock it with Mona High School. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Mona um, and Craig Butler and his program, you know, with some of his weapons. Quick plug again. Uh, guys, guys. <laughs> go, on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Guys, go and watch all our stuff with Craig Butler. Like, this man is a very enigmatic figure in football. A brilliant football man, and he gave us some of his, his time. So you guys go and give us some of your time yeah, yeah, yeah. and watch him giving us some of his time. You know what I mean? Max. Yeah, guys, so go and do it. But yeah, I think Mona has what it takes to be, I guess, reign superior over the what you call the minnows. All right, so what? All right, this. so we're going to talk about you know some of the standout players for Manning Cup. Before we move on to that, tell me though, you have an up, you have a um, updated pick for the winner of the Manning Cup? Oh, um, you're still rocking with Kingston. No, I, I think I think because JC has a formidable claim in number. JC, JC has looked good, but I just think with Kingston College, it just looks easy. Mm -hmm. Mona put JC on the back foot. Stats put JC on the back foot. In Kingston College's three games that they played, it was just. But but we see that JC can win at the storm. Well, that, so KC that, is going to. That is true. Look at, look at us talking like Charlie Smith do have a chance. Uh, and, and, and <laughs> that is true because because um, KC have yet to really be challenged. Yeah. So when somebody finally throws some hot water in their direction, we don't know what we're going to. to that's true. All right, so let's move on to some of the standout players from the Money Cup. And what we are going to do is talk about the Golden Boot conversation. So there are a couple of players in the conversation. Let's talk about it. All right, well, my favorite for the Golden Boot, and I think basically yeah. has already secured it, is Lang. He scored a hat trick and garnered an assist in his first quarterfinal game against Catherine, which yeah. I said was the pivotal. Game full name, man, because I thought. They they, they both have the same first name. Oh, Omar Lang. Yeah. Or Leng. I'm I not think sure. It's Leng. I think it's Leng. Leng, yeah. Leng, sorry. From sorry for, for butchering the name, bro. Um, bro, he's just a goal scorer. He just knows where the goal is. How many goals? 13 goals yeah. thus far. In the 13 cup. goals in the Manning Cup without any return legs this season. Hmm? Remember That's this? a lot of goals. Yeah, this season just one leg. Hmm. And he's by far and away, um, far and away the leader of Manning Cup goal scorers. And I think he will be able to hold on. Yeah, I, but I still think he has one or two more Manning Cup goals left in him. See, the thing is, running him down, chasing him down is Omar Lang, his, team, his, his teammate. How, how would that turn out? Omar Reed. Omar Reed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will there be some selfishness in those games? No, I, I don't think so. I think stats are a unit there together. We were yeah. there, as I said, guys, we have a video on yeah, them. Check that out. Um, They were a coherent unit. Mm -hmm. Those boys love each That's other. That's their captain also, Omar. Ritz. Yeah. I don't think we'll be seeing any selfishness. Yeah, I'm just you know, sure. Those boys love each other and those boys play for each other. Right. Um, so, I think Omar Lang or Leng might have a goal mm -hmm. or two in him versus Kingston College. And then again, there is a third place match as well. Mm -hmm. Where I, I think he'll be playing Charlie Smith in the third place match. And I just do think he will be able to hold on. But as we said, Omar Reed is right there behind of him with eight goals. Mm -hmm. And Christopher Pearson, if anybody has a really, chance, really good player. If anybody has a chance to overtake Omar, Omar Lang, which is unlikely because he's five goals ahead, six goals ahead, sorry, I'm off lap math. But with seven game, with seven goals, he's six goals behind Omar Lang. I don't see it happening. No, he's a midfielder. Yeah, he's, he's a midfielder. And he's not going to score six goals in the next two games. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Outrageous. But I, I think Lang has secured nice it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lang has secured it, but Pearson is the only person with any chance. Give us another mention. And Duncan McKenzie yeah. with five goals. As I said, another central midfielder that pushes up the field, a Frank Lampard type, that runs the game but still gets in and around the box, bangs in goals from JC, the number seven, an outstanding player. So none of those guys will challenge Leng for the golden boot, mm -hmm. but those guys are all mentions, I think, outstanding players in this season, Money Cup season thus far. All right, guys, so what we want from you, tell us in the comment section, who do you think will win the Money Cup? And also, who will take home the golden boot in the Money Cup this year? Yeah, I think the golden boot's already secured by Leng. Let's see, let's see what they have to say. But we can wrap it up now. Do you think it was a good one? We, you know, we covered all the bases. Yeah, man, guys. So, going into the new year, Schoolboy Football will resume, guys. And this year at Sports TV is so excited. We're also very excited that we were able to bring you guys along this journey. We were able to introduce you guys to some of the players, introduce you guys to the coaches, introduce you guys to the programs. 
We were yeah, there. Better too. We were there on the ground doing it all for you guys. You know, we we're working hard and we we never ever stop, bro. Alright guys, so don't forget though to subscribe to the channel. Please share the video. You want me to give them the match today? Ah, uh, you can give all them right, the match. Alright, each one of our subscribers share our video and get us five subscribers. Five. Just five, not a lot. You know how many subscribers that would get us? See us do the thing now, people. Please and thank you. Road to 500, guys. Yeah, we're very close. This is our Sports TV. Oh.